Well, welcome back to NRM 638, Python scripting for ArcGIS applications, spring semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This week we'll do ArcPy geoprocessing. And for every geoprocessing tool, you can execute that tool in Python scripting language. So for example, if we look at this tool add field, for every tool down at the bottom, they'll give you example scripts. So here's a code sample for arcpy.add field, the name of the feature class, the field name, long integer, etc. So usually they give you a couple examples. So basically for any geoprocessing tool, if you use ArcGIS help, you can find code examples and then what all the parameters are. So for example, the input table is what table we're going to add fields to. The field name would be the name of the field, and then you'd have field type. So field type are these keywords, text, double, short, etc. Okay, so what we're going to do this week is we'll do geoprocessing of tables, point feature classes, linear referencing, and polygon feature classes. So one of the first applications will have tables of the last day of year in the spring of snow by these zones. So for example, this table is from 2000, and then you'll have a table 2001, 2002, all the way up to 2014. So you notice the day of the year in 2000 for the last day of snow was late because this was a late spring. And in 2014, it was relatively early. This was an early spring. So what we want to do is write a Python script that will add a field called snow year to each table and then fill in the appropriate value using an update cursor for that field snow year and then use the merge geoprocessing tool to merge all these tables together and have them sorted by this zone by year. So we execute our ArcPy Python script, and our final output table is by snow year. We rearranged it using the pivot table tool in our ArcPy Python scripting. So this is the first zone, and you'll notice that 2000 was a fairly late spring. 2014 was a fairly early spring. Actually, 2013 was the latest spring for all the zones. But basically for each different zone we'll have the day of the mean day of last snow by year. Okay, our second table application, we've got a standalone table of stream discharge for this C3 watershed basin. And basically for each date we have the flow in terms of liters per second at the gauging station starting May 19, 1969. And if we go all the way to the last record, the last observation was August 19, 2007. So you're going to use your Python scripting to manipulate this table and then produce an annual table. So for every year, there'd be a table and it will have the flow in liters per second, the day of the year, and the year as a field. So we execute our Python script, and then we have our annual table. So for example, this table is stream discharge in 1969, starting May 19th, 1969, which is the day of the year 139, going all the way to October 15th, 1969, which is day of year 288. And then this, this is the flow in liters per second. Going all the way to our last year from the table is in 2007, starting May 28th in 2007. And if we sort by day of year descending, it ends on August 19th, 2007. And then this was the flow in liters per second for August 19th, 2007. So you'll have tables for every year output from your geoprocessing script. Okay, the second type of application we're going to do is geoprocessing of points. 
So here's one example. We've got spruce seedlings and we have 1,347 spruce seedlings. And for each spruce seedling, we have the height growth in centimeters. And what we wanna do is test the hypothesis that height growth is a function of seedling density. So we'll create a buffer polygon around each seedling point, and the buffer polygon will be 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, all the way up to a meter. And then the question is, what is the mean height within each buffer polygon? And then how many seedlings are inside each buffer polygon? So since we're gonna loop through incrementing our buffer polygon in increments of 10 centimeters, we're gonna do that in memory. So a lot of our work will be in our geoprocessing script. We'll just write to memory rather than the hard drive and then we'll save our final table to the hard drive. So we run our Python script, and the final table we have the buffer distance in meters, so a tenth of a meter is 10 centimeters, what the mean height growth is in those 10 centimeter buffers that had only one seedling in the buffer to what the mean height growth was for those 10 centimeter buffers that had five seedlings in the buffer. And you'll notice that height growth declines as we have more seedlings in a 10 centimeter buffer. All the way to a 100 centimeter buffer, which would be one meter, we have 15 polygons that had 23 in that one meter buffer and the average height growth was 9.10 centimeters. All the way to our last one, for our buffer distance of 100 centimeters, for those that had 50 seedlings in the buffer, there were 30 of those buffers, the mean height growth was 8.94 centimeters. Okay, so a point application, here we have locations of radio colored caribou. And what we wanna do is create random points. There's 30 caribou locations, so we'll create 30 random points. And the random points will be distributed within the extent of this vegetation feature class. And then compare the vegetation class of the caribou points and the vegetation class of the random points. So we run our Python script, and as an example, for each vegetation class, we have the total caribou count. So for example, there was only one caribou in broadleaf forest, and there were 11 caribou in black spruce woodland. And then you would do the same thing with your random locations. Our next two applications will be linear referencing applications where we're gonna use measures along lines. So here's an example. We have a line representing the Chena Hot Springs Road and the total length of that line is 56.35 miles. And we have a table. We wanna carve up the road into segments zero to 10 miles, 10 to 20 miles, 20 to 30 miles, 30 to 40 miles, all the way up to 50 to 56 miles. And then within each stretch, we want to determine the number of accidents. So we'll have a point feature class representing for each point is an accident and then the year it occurred. So we want to basically determine for each year on the Chena Hot Springs Road from zero to 10 miles, how many accidents were there, all the way to from 50 to 56 miles, how many accidents were there. So we run our Python script. In our final solution table, we have sorted by year, sorted by the stretch of highway, how many total accidents occurred. So for example, in 2001, from zero to 10 miles, there were nine accidents all the way to, in 2014, from mile 50 to 56, there were seven accidents that occurred. 
our second application of linear referencing, we've got a measured line, and the line is already measured in miles. And then we have a table of culvert locations. And what we want to do is, based on the mileage, create a point representing the culvert along our measured road. And then once we've created points from our culverts table, we want to determine for each culvert point what is the stream that that point is that culvert is serving and then we'll sort our final point feature class by stream name so then we could see for each stream how many culverts there are for that stream so we run our python script and our final point feature class we have the culvert id for each culvert the mileage along the road the road ID, and then sorted by stream, the streams that the culverts are serving. So for example, we've got four culverts that serve the east branch of the Big Bad River. And we'll have two polygon geoprocessing applications. So the first application is we have our vegetation polygons. What we want to do is for each class compute the total number of hectares and then determine the percentage area by class so we run our python script and then the output table has the number of polygons the total hectares and then what that is in terms of the percent area so this huge tan polygon is low shrub and the percentage of area in low shrub is 32.4 percent and there's only four marsh polygons and they're very small so the percentage of the area in marsh polygons is 0.3 percent whenever you compute percent area always check does it sum up to 100 so in this case our sum is 100 percent and our other polygon geoprocessing application we have what the actual vegetation is on the ground in these veg plot points. And what we want to do is create what's called an error matrix. So for each veg plot point, determine what the polygon class was, and then output that into a matrix form where the columns are our truth. So what on the ground the vegetation type was, and the rows are what the vegetation type was classified in the polygons. So we run our Python script, and the columns are the actual vegetation type on the ground. So for example, there were three ground truth plots. Two of them were correctly in black spruce forest polygon. One black spruce forest plot was incorrectly in a black spruce woodland polygon. And then the next one, we've got five black spruce woodland plots. They are all correctly in black spruce woodland polygons. The next one, we've got two broadly forests. They were correctly in broadly forest polygons, etc. Here we have mixed forest. On the ground, it was mixed forest, and it was incorrectly in a broadly forest polygon. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, the video sessions are open this week, and the first video session is on geoprocessing tables in Python scripting.